airbrush comes in very compact package and my unit is branded with iBeauty logo. I guess it comes with variety of different names and my particular model is marketed towards makeup scene. Inside we will find user guide, airbrush itself. So this is actually very common and familiar model to me and I have done some reviews on my channel for similar airbrushes. For now I can say that this is dual action airbrush with removable color cup and needle stop. I will explain more going deeper into review. Later follows rechargeable mini compressor. Also we get some accessories like additional transparent plastic color cup. USB Type-C cable to charge our compressor. So let's have a closer look onto airbrush itself. For small amount of paint you can use airbrush like this, but I like to attach color cup for demonstration purposes. From first glance it looks like decent quality airbrush. Color cup is quite smooth and lid has a tight fit. At the end of airbrush we will find needle stop or so called trigger limiter. Not necessary but very nice to have feature. Needle, nozzle and air cap system is very familiar and easy to maintain. With included spanner you will be able to remove nozzle. If you looked carefully you had noticed that half of the trigger system is missing. That's because other part of air valve system is built into compressor. On the bottom of compressor you can check battery charge level. After attaching airbrush our kit is now ready for painting. Immediately I noticed that trigger has so called dead zone. That means it only acts like a button and you can't really adjust pressure using this trigger. Button on the compressor is directly linked to the airbrush trigger. However, airbrush kit still has tiny bit of pressure adjustment. You can cycle between two power modes using button on the bottom of compressor. User manual says it has between 20 and 27 psi, but I highly doubt this number. If you are curious, battery capacity is 2000 mA and you can use 5 volt cell phone charger. For first test I chose harder to spray paint with metal flakes. However, I went easy for first test and added lots of thinner.
So at first it was very unusual to have this vibrating handle underneath the airbrush. Also it was obscuring my vision a tiny bit and I hit table a few times. As for airbrush performance it actually felt nice. Trigger was quite responsive and pressure was high enough. But unfortunately after a few minutes I started to feel that compressor is heating up. So that means air from compressor will also get warmer. This inevitably will make paint to dry faster and it will affect paint atomization. During shading and line test, coverage was pretty uniform. It was more affected by my poor trigger control, but not by the compressor airflow. No airbrush test on this channel will be complete without painting plastic model parts. I used same paint and painted some test pieces. After compressor got warmer, I decided to mix up some black paint. It will help to see paint particle atomization better. If you look closely, you will see that paint dried up a tiny bit too fast. This might be caused by warm air coming out from the compressor. That's why you see dust-like edges and not very smooth transitions. This problem is usually solved by adding more thinner or paint retarder. That's what I did in order to achieve glossy finish on this car bumper. Our finished test pieces look really decent. Obviously you can't expect to use every modeling paint, for example clear coats might be very difficult. But with properly thinned acrylic paint, 
there should be no problems. This tooth is actually a very nice bonus option for your existing airbrush setup. For example, when you need to paint few parts, you can just go outside without starting your compressor and powering on your spray boot. Most likely, some of you have been in situations when you complete your model aircraft and forget to paint antennas, or for example, you complete your model car and forget mirrors. I can also see lots of uses outside of modeling world. It can be used by various kind of artists in classes and events. When you actually think about it, it requires no power outlet, it can also be charged with power bank, and not being worried about airbrush stand or holder is also a nice thing. So my conclusion would be, this is a really nice to have kit as a bonus for your setup. Definitely not something you pick as your first airbrush. Thank you for watching this review, 